Hello, old friend. Oh, I am getting old, my friend. Yes, I know. Me too. How you been, dude? It's been a long time. Yeah, it really has. It's been wild. It's been wild. In the meantime, our channel's dying while yours is blowing up, dude. Yeah. You could say I've been a little selfish. All right, fine. I'll blame it all on you. You've been selfish, dude. <laughs> yes. Thanks a lot, man. Just going to yeah. leave your friend hanging. Pretty much, man. Pretty much. I've been fucking just all over the place mentally, emotionally, physically. <laughs> been an interesting couple of weeks. Well, fill us in, dude. Well, let's see. Let's see here. Where do I begin? Probably from uh, the beginning. So, I guess the furthest thing back would start with my brother. He's in the tech field and uh, he was sent to Israel uh, for his company. And usually it's no big deal. It's, you know, usually. a cool experience for him. <laughs> and uh, I even told him, I was like, hey, man, you know, shit's like going down over there. This was before the big attack. And he's like, yeah, you know, they're doing that shit all the time, though. It's like, all right, that's fine. Well, I mean, both of y'all have know. a point. True, we do. But I don't know. It it seemed like it was more uh, ramped up than usual, in my opinion. But I've never been there. He's been there twice or three times now. So I just kind of, like, went with the flow. But anyways, he... He texted me and my other brother just as like, a, hey, I'm going to be in Israel, you know, what's at me or whatever. And I'm landing right now. And literally the day of him landing is when they decided to do that surprise attack. And uh, luckily he was in a, a place where it didn't get too severely bombed, but it was definitely, you know, launched at. It was, um, shoot, what's it called? It's Her Herzeliya or something like that, right north of Tel Aviv. Okay. Uh, it's a little smaller suburb of Tel Aviv. Um, so that's where he was at. And luckily his hotel had a, a bunker. I guess every room has a little little bunker area for you to little, hide out in just in case <laughs> yeah so he was like you know he heard the sirens going off and he's like what the fuck do i do and people were like just go to your hotel room and hide in your bunker and so that's what he did and um yeah literally right when the news started hitting my news feed it was like 30 minutes fresh and uh, he wasn't, like, getting back to us for a while, and he finally did. And uh, it was like, yep, I'm bunkered down and shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, at first he was trying to stick it out and, like, because, you know, it, they were downgrading it. And the very next day they started launching more rockets. And he's like, okay, I think I can get out of here now. And they had to do this whole spiel or – it is a pretty tricky situation because, like, you can't go north because that's uh, Lebanon, and they're they're fighting up there. You can't go east because that's you know Hamas and and people that don't like <laughs> Americans right now. <laughs> and south is Egypt, which isn't the best place, I guess. And you know, fucking west is. The goddamn ocean. 
so he didn't know where the fuck to go and and then also flying on an airplane while rockets are going yeah, through the skies going is up <laughs> is where all the missiles are so it's like what the fuck do you do and so he, he had literally had to stay there in a war zone for a few days before they could book him a flight and by then the u.s navy was in the mediterranean and um it was kind of like a little bit more secured for people to get the fuck out of there and so he had to fly all the way let's see where'd he go where'd he go um he flew to dubai and then he flew from dubai to uh san francisco holy shit dude <laughs> and then from san fran he went to where he's from so it was quite he literally flew around the world <laughs> that's so terrifying dude in, in like a week and he also got covid in the process oh, awesome. <laughs> so like we were all psyched like yay he's home and then he's like by the way i have covid <laughs> sorry and hey, the grand scheme of thing that's a that's a win i'll take a little yeah. flu like symptoms yes so he made it home safe and uh it's very fortunate there but it was extremely stressful hell yeah dude it's, so uh, your life <laughs> doesn't really get a break dude no not with the fam at least and yeah i was just like geez do you need more attention bro like why are you going to war zones and right? shit you, you didn't <laughs> have to do all that dude we love you man for real but yeah, so I did a, a real deep dive on the shit going on over there and I was like really tapped into it. And uh, yeah, it's pretty extreme. Scary stuff, man. I, my heart goes out to all the people involved in that shit and really sucks on, on both sides. Oh, it really yeah. Sucks. It definitely... <laughs> is weird that it's like we need to draw lines here in america or it's like well it's pretty easy to draw a line of like all right i don't support terrorism that's pretty easy right but it's right. like i also don't support people dying the yeah. end i don't have to make a big political stance of free palestine because they're being occupied I don't have to make yeah. a political stance like I stand with Israel because it's anti-Semitic not to. It's like, yeah, I stand for whatever resolution involves the least amount of innocent people dying. Yeah, it's pretty that's... easy to state. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it. You know. Um, yeah, everyone needs to chill the fuck out. And stop yeah. taking sides when you really don't have to. Yeah, and it's like if you really do like want to draw sides, great. Be my guest. Look into who has started every single conflict since the dawn of the newer Israel. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty easy to see, like, oh, I really don't like Jews here. <laughs> right. You know, then yeah, you can, you can look at like the practices of like Israel hiring Arabs and Muslims and you know, letting two million people occupy or not occupy, but like walk freely through Israel. Like, that's a lot of prop, like a, a lot of anti Semitic propaganda talking about mm -hmm. like it's an open air prison when you know, Jordan right north of them have taken i think it's like 73 percent of palestinian land but like there's no like anti-muslim stance about jordan it's literally yeah. all about israel I'm like all right well i think y'all are y'all got some slant on that one yeah for sure but, yeah and it's it's been going on forever too like right. since ancient times 
Well, that's what I was going to say is like, so like Israel is 1948, like modern Israel. But right. if y'all really want to end the conflict and like in the debate, let's go back to King Baldwin of 1026. Ooh, 1026. Because uh, he conquered the Muslims and he reigned under the as the king of Jerusalem under the uh, kingdom of Jerusalem was for Christianity. Jewish? Okay, I was about he was either Christian or Jewish, and I remember that. Yeah, he's definitely because that's like the the ringer that no one remembers. It's like, wow. At one point he was Christian and no one talks about that. Yeah. But uh do you remember the movie Kingdom of Heaven? Oh, fucking love that movie. It's one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, dude, that's medieval. Uh, that's King Baldwin, the the leper king with the mask. Okay, sick. Yeah. So, uh, dude, this is definitely a historical figure you should look into because he's a fucking badass. Yeah. He was like dead by thirty. Is because uh, he conquered. Uh, Jerusalem in when he was 16 I think yeah he was really young yeah his dad died his mother disowned him grotesque like covered in leprosy wasn't projected to make it past like 12 and uh, he's like yeah fuck that dude I'm gonna be a king and mm -hmm. then he, he uh, crowned his nephew as the heir to the throne he knew he was never gonna fucking have his own fucking really yeah. cool figure you should look into he's awesome man he also didn't want people to fight over the throne either right that's right. why he gave it to his nephew right it was like the most peaceful option for jerusalem yeah he's a like a teenager and was like i'm pretty worldly guys yeah pretty smart compared to y'all yeah. yeah you're right dude history really is cool so stuff. cool oh hell yeah man i love it but yeah um, it's it's been going on forever and it's it's truly sad it's a tragedy yeah that's why like you know despite what basically every single modern age person says about Christianity, it's the, the only religion that has a figurehead or deity that is a pacifist that doesn't believe in violence or war. And yeah, that's why uh, Constantine switched from paganism to Christianity. Because mm. if you have a populace of pacifists, one, they're easier to control, but two, that's a very like well-oiled kingdom versus you know Judaism and Islam, both very like there's enshrined in its religious texts is like, yo, you need to kill people. <laughs> and like you need to kill people bad. It's like, all right, dude. And it's mostly about killing and in Judaism it's Goyim, which is like anyone that's not a uh, a Jew. And in Muslim or in Islam it's uh people that have left the faith, people that aren't in the faith. Jews specifically, uh, Christians specifically, and it's like, and it's a way to honor, like Allah, and it's like, all right, all right, that could be a big problem in the modern world. Yeah, and like, don't let this come as a like defense of Christianity, but because modern Christianity has done awful things to innocent people especially anyone that is like on any like sexuality spectrum right 
They've or, been repressing that shit for a while. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't tell a fucking seven-year-old that they're going to hell simply because, like, he likes to play with dolls, you know? So, yeah, this isn't a defense of Christianity. It's a de defense that of, like, having a pacifist as your mm -hmm. you know, inspiration. It leads to good things. That's why I'm getting, like, or at least refreshing my shit on, like, Taoism and Buddhism. Not necessarily Hinduism, because that's pretty violent as well. Definitely uh, male-centric, where it's like you can have women slaves. Oh, yeah? In Buddhism? No, God, no. Hinduism. Okay. <laughs> it's like, really? Yeah, as many as you want, dude. Yeah. Yeah, Hinduism and Buddhism were my favorite to study in world history. It's because you don't really hear shit about it, you know, growing up in America right? that much. So it's it's really interesting to me to go across the world and see how they think. And I agree with a lot of shit. Like especially in Buddhism, like karma. Well, yeah, that's the, so it, it starts with Hinduism, which I believe is Indian. Yeah, it's Indian. Then yes, Buddhism, yeah, Buddhism is a branch of, a branch off of Hinduism. Right, which is which, like things of Buddha, right? He, right, exactly. Yeah. Um, Prince name that I can't pronounce. That's yeah, his okay. teachings. Um, <laughs> and then Taoism is Chinese, which is Lao Tzu. Mm -hmm. And I like Taoism, I think, a little more than Buddhism in a sense of like its practicality in my life. One second. Um, I'm going to go yell at my dog. She's being a bitch. Cool. I'll yell at my dog too. Hey, stop it. What are you doing? Shut Go. Up. Go. You shut Stand up too. Up. Go. No more. No more. Speaking yeah. I don't, bitch. I don't think that works. Sorry about that. It's fun to do. That's for huh? sure. So I don't think it ever works, but it's fun to do. It works with my dogs are tiny, so they fear me. Oh, good. Nothing like fear to rule a kingdom. All I got to do is bust out my lightsaber, and the the blonde one will have a heart attack. <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> she doesn't like it. She's scared of it. <laughs> That's good. Which, That's what. You, That's really what you need. Yeah. All I got to do is press that button. <laughs> it's like generational trauma. Or it's like the ancient ones told me of this weapon. I thought the Sith were dead. <laughs> <laughs> She's like a hardcore Star Wars nerd. <laughs> right. Oh, no. She runs back to the <laughs> Jedi Council. I believe the Sith have returned. <laughs> His heart isn't pure. If he keeps I using the we force, I feel we would have felt a disturbance in the force if the Sith have come back. <laughs> yeah, you don't believe me. She's the Qui Gon of the Council, right? Just fucking train him, anyways. <laughs> It'll be fine. How many people will die if we train little Annie? Nothing. <laughs> oh, it's, it's good, dude. Relax. I've got a good feeling about this little slave boy. Right. I love that Anakin's mom name is me. That shit is so fucking me? funny, dude. I go <laughs> like you can you can there's a lot of things you can feel the thought processes on of like a lot of Star Wars like literature and 
creative decisions, like the like what word or what two words is me a combination of? It's the she me because I'm the daddy of Lord <laughs> Darth Vader. Okay, yeah, that's very clever, George. You think we could change that? No, it's me. <laughs> All right, you're right. I gave birth to Darth Vader. It's me. All right, George. Whatever you he's, say. He's just trying to have fun with it, man. No. I don't think that was the decision besides <laughs> by naming Shmi Shmi. I think there's <laughs> Sometimes you can be at the bottom of your creativity well. Because I don't fucking know. Does she need a name? Yes, George. We're making the guidebook right now. Ah, it's me. Does that work? Okay, it's me. And no one's going to question it. Like, you can't question the great who literally came up with Jar Jar. Like, Hell yeah. I still love Jar Jar. Maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> the the well, the Darth Jar Jar theory is very fun. I love it, yeah. And it's slightly that was kind of the case, but he was gonna be more of a scoundrel slash like smuggler versus a Darth or like a Sith. Yeah. But yeah, that was going to be the reveal in episode two. Was Jar Jar was competent and fucking everyone over the entire time. But then the reception of Jar Jar was like, yo, all right, let's just get him out of here fast. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, but as kids, man, it was one of my favorite characters. Oh, yeah, dude. Giggling when he got his tongue hit in the electric field of the pod. Whoa, dude. Giggling right. like a fucking child. Oh, that's because I was. Anakin warned your bitch ass about that. And what'd you do? Dropped your little screwdriver and boom. Idiot. Gotcha, dude. Um, so another cool thing that happened was the eclipse. That was fun, dude. It was. It really was. Got some good pictures. Of the eclipse itself? No, the shadows of the eclipse were... Oh, right? Shit is so cool, dude. Like the tree leaves? Yep, exactly. Oh, dude, I was I was tripping. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, are you seeing this? Does that look normal to you? Because <laughs> I'm tripping balls, <laughs> yeah i like i kept insisting i was like to my family i was like look at the shadows look at the shadows and i'm like fine we'll look at the shadows and then like, so i sent them up. pictures of the shadows and they're like yeah i'm not fucking responding to that text I'm like what the fuck like <laughs> i've been talking to you about this for like a month like <laughs> answer me like, yeah fuck you devil man like, what Mm -hmm. yeah, it was fun dude like obviously the brain power of my little niece can't process that shit but the brain power of the au pair that is nannying her little niece mm -hmm. I was like I was sitting outside staring at it and she was next to me and I go come here she just looks at me I go what the fuck I was like, I said her name. I was like, come here. She's like, oh, you're talking to me? I thought you were talking to the dogs. Like, why the fuck would I like, get the dogs <laughs> to look at the eclipse? Like, I don't know. I didn't think I was included. It's like, come here, stupid. Wow. I showed her that shit, and she was geeking, dude. She was over the moon. That's cool. Yeah, man, it was very cool. But yeah, I was... I decided to play uh, some basketball until the eclipse happened. Hell like, yeah, dude. Hooper. 
it was such a beautiful day like it was windy sunny no no uh clouds and it, it actually was cool and it felt nice in texas and so yeah we were hooping and then uh the eclipse started happening and it i was expecting it to get a little bit darker than it did but whatever and so yeah the like the lighting was weird it looked kind of like gray kind of lighting like it, was, it almost felt like it was cloudy but there was no yeah. clouds in the sky i was like what the fuck yeah it felt wrong you just knew something was weird and then looking at the shadows was trippy and uh this old couple had the glasses and they let us borrow them and check it out real quick that was really nice of them um, oh yeah dude i i did my due diligence and bought some before <laughs> i did not <laughs> yeah because there's one in, coming up next year so it's like you might as yeah. well dude yeah coming same spot you mean so, the yeah, sun well no like same <laughs> uh central texas is on the path of like ultimate fucking right, viewing right. So it was it's cool. gonna happen in the same place, dude. At the sun. <laughs> yeah. And the, it's and the, the same sun and the same moon. And the same <laughs> earth. It's crazy. <laughs> uh speaking of planetary type shit, I downloaded Ooh. that game you told me to download. The Outer Wilds. My god, dude. It's fun, man. Hell yeah. I made a I haven't posted it yet, but I made a clip of just me like getting fucked up the first time I played it. I was, it's, was it? I think I uh, flew to the meteorite. Oh and, yeah, yeah. And it orbits the sun on this crazy orbit of where it gets really fucking close. Yeah, that's and where so, it melts, and so you can explore the the asteroid. Yeah, so I was like walking around the asteroid. Cause I was real proud of myself that I landed on it and, uh, and the, the shit started melting. I'm like, wait, what? And I look up and it's the fucking sun. <laughs> and all of a sudden my ship gets pulled off the asteroid <laughs> and the fucking sun steals my ship. And I'm like, no, dude, and I, I had to jump into space to fucking get, get to my ship. It was hilarious. <laughs> That's literally like, one of the first things because we played the the dlc and then after the dlc you get a new ending so you, you've got to like redo the the steps to end the original game okay and uh literally the first thing i did was fly straight into the sun <laughs> <laughs> yeah i haven't uh, made it to the end but the little like just flying around in the space physics is a lot of fun yeah dude it was a uh i think it was i forget what like thesis it was whether it was physics or astrophysics but it started out as a like college dissertation of like the last year-end project of this dude's college career Mm -hmm. I was like, I think I'm onto something. So he kickstarted some shit, and people are like, "Yeah, you're definitely onto something, man." Like, continue. Right. So he made it like really badass. When you look at the like alpha build versus what this build is now, it's so amazing. Yeah. So that's been fun. Um, I haven't been gaming much just because. Work's been a bitch too. I had to. It's been dramatic, button heads with, with people at work, and you know they're. My boss is just a hothead, kind of control his attitude, disrespectful, you know. Oh, so just, the favorite. Yeah, just the ber the best person to work with, <laughs> and I just had to draw the line, and I was like, look. Uh, you guys need to move me or I'm going to quit. <laughs> and uh, so there was a big old thing and they're like, well, can you guys like make up? I'm like, nah, 
<laughs> Sorry, this isn't a fucking relationship. It's not yeah. how it works. Yeah, I was like, well, you know, his issue is he doesn't respect people other than himself. So I don't have time to let him go to therapy and work this shit out. <laughs> you know, like, I, I need relief now. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not your responsibility to teach a human how to be human. That's right. Yeah, and it was it was all drama and fucking just stupid ass shit that I didn't want to deal with. You know, this is like one job that I'm like doing my best to stay out of drama and to not talk shit and just kind of work. You know, I really don't want to fucking put my personal shit out there. I don't want other people's personal shit in my way like i'm just trying to do my fucking job and it's so hard <laughs> like people nowadays just want to throw that shit in the, in the mix and i don't know what you expect to happen like it just makes things worse <laughs> you know yeah i think a lot of people equate that type of behavior with a like way to feel better maybe it's power maybe it's control over their situation yeah um, because people nowadays are very unhappy oh um, yeah and i think that's a form of relief it's just talking mad shit and I, I do like talking shit because I'm really good at it. Yeah. But, you know, it takes an extreme toll. And when you're plugged in to your psyche just a little bit, you understand how much of a toll it takes. Yep. But most people aren't plugged in at all to their subconscious. They're just whatever is surface level. And typically what surface level is the people that they're talking shit about. Yeah. You know, they don't, they don't have control in their job or with their boss. So they're just like, dude, this guy said this thing and yeah. this thing makes me feel this way. Like, man, eh, yeah, <laughs> I get it, man. Like, yeah. I mean, if you, ain't got much going on and that's the type of shit that you want to get into then great but like this is a a trade and we're mostly fucking men whoa whoa, 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 so whoa, like, whoa rephrase that rephrase that entirely what you just said this is a trade and we're mostly fucking men what does that mean <laughs> <laughs> What kind of trade are you in, dude? Oh, so, yeah, the ass penetration <laughs> trade of oh, ass so fucking. That's what you're doing, laying pipe, huh? Mm -hmm. I knew it. You know, uh, the crane operators, they go up there. They're they're alone all day. They go need some little, company. A little cherry picking going on. A little mm -mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Blow my whistle, bitch. Get it nice and lubed up. So that's what you mean. You've been hanging out with old shit. Ah, old shit in the pipe. You're talking about getting a piece of poo in your pee hole, huh? Dude. That's my nightmare. All of this makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately, yeah. that nightmare is like extremely rare. I know, your, right? Your body's defenses are pretty good about that people have been doing anal for for decades <laughs> well yeah decades is a weird way of saying thousands of years but yeah <laughs> what do you think caveman was getting some ass i mean it's literally written in the old testament not to fuck another guy in the butt so you know <laughs> <laughs> i like to imagine like before Christianity is just a bunch of homosexuals running around. <laughs> but it's it'd be funny like the one guy that's like, guys, like, no. 
like, you want to understand why we don't have any more babies? Because you're doing this shit. But it's yeah, fine. We Come like on. it. <laughs> Come on, Uga. Come on. It's neat. Right? We fight together. We fuck together. We die no, together. No, 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 no. <laughs> have you heard of pussy? It's awesome. You should try it. No, Uga like butt. Dang it. <laughs> right? What if back in the day, like the manliest thing you could do is fuck another man in the ass? I mean, that's I, pretty there, manly. There's some credence to that, right? Where <laughs> it's like, you know, ancient Greece, they were butt fuckers for sure. Yeah. And it was like maybe a little too much of butt fuckers because. They they were snatching him up pretty young. Like eh, I need a little boy. Like ah, all right, chill out, chill out. But it's like Olympics were all nude, all male. I'm like well, I don't know. I think there's a there's a precedent in history that states like what's more manly than being attracted to a man. Uh, I would say, uh, I don't know, war. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, what's a breakup with a man? War, dude. So it's like everything is, everything has a glean of like homoeroticism, dude. Like, hate. I hate to, to break like the illusion for most people, but. Superheroes are pretty gay. And superheroes oh, yeah. are my favorite thing on the planet. And, you know, Superman and Batman have their undies on the outside. <laughs> and, you know, if you want to, like, dispute me on that, it's... But that's because they wanted to look like strong men of the era, like from the circus. And, well, all right, well, strong men of the era wore nothing but their undies. And I hate to tell you guys, but that's pretty gay. That's Not knocking it. I'm just saying. Like, when no man looks at a buff woman and gets jealous, right? Like, dang, I wish I was that buff. But when you see Arnie and like Pumping Iron or like Lou Ferrigno, I'm like, dang. I wish I looked like that. Right. You know, like there's always a glean of like, eh, it's kind of gay, but I, I wouldn't be the bottom dude. Definitely. I not. would be the top. I mean, never, I'm manly dude. I don't get to appreciate it. Give. <laughs> no, I was actually talking to a gay guy about like the logistics of being a bottom. And Man, that is uh, an insane amount of preparation and work to get fucked in the butt. Like, it's not this just like, open up, here we come. It's like, you've got a douche, so you got to spread out all your butt shit, get it all out. Yeah. Lots Lots of them take like supplements like Metamucil and fiber. That way they've got a clean poop track to begin with. Then starting out, it apparently it hurts like hell. They're like what? They're like, yeah, it hurts really bad. <laughs> like what? Yeah, you gotta stretch that shit out. Like, why why the fuck? They're like, you need to start with a small toy. And then you got to get bigger and bigger in order to take a cock. Like, does it feel good? Like, yeah, it, it hurts the first few. Yeah, yeah. Like dozen times. Like, why? I was like, all right. So do you climax from it? And they're like, oh, absolutely not. I'm like what? That's interesting. 
Like they're like, you can, but they said you've got to be the most patient person in the world, and the top never lasts that long. They're like you basically just have to masturbate while you're doing it. And they're like, admittedly, it feels better than like regular masturbation. I'm like, all right. Like, but yeah, it still hurts. Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, if if that was my experience without knowing that, I would just be like, oh yeah, this is not for me. I don't know right. how every bottom dude wasn't like that. Like, yeah, I guess I'm not gay. <laughs> like, whoops. Yeah, I guess I'm yeah. going back to church. That's for sure, man. It's it's definitely like not for everybody and but you know some some people are totally into it a, well, a lot so, of people are into it i mean you've got to be really forward thinking to be a bottom to be like this is worth it in the end like, <laughs> damn dude you right. gotta have like numbing agents and like special lube it's like, whoo, that is just too much for me, man. Can't do it. But, like, the only reason I couldn't be, like, a top either would be, like, I don't like the smell of poop or butt or... Right. So it's like, that's just... Just from a logistical standpoint, I couldn't be gay. Yeah, I have you to know? admit, like... It is very off-putting. Yeah. But I think the whole thing behind it is like, you know, domination and also like your partner like enjoying it is like the only motivation that I see out of it is like I'm going to do this for you. <laughs> you know right. What I mean? like, for sure. I this mean, isn't for me. Let, let's not pervert what like being gay is like it it can be gentle and non-dominating right like, let's so let's gentle. not like class them in like some bdsm fetish they're a genuine sexuality but like i there's i mean because this is you know like the argument like you can't choose to be gay just like you can't choose to be straight which i, I completely agree with like because there's a lot of choices you would have to make in order to be gay. That's just like, you know, you're attracted to who you're attracted to. And sure. You can't really change that unless, you know, you get some brain damage or something. I don't know, a tumor. But Well, some people change. Some people fucking pop out a whole family and then they're like, you know what? I think I like men better you know i prefer dick i think that's better than children which hey Hell yeah but i mean if you've ever lived with a woman i could definitely see men making the change like dude i cannot do this ever again like oh my <laughs> fucking god right this is so brutal this is the worst i'm being like attacked on a i'm having spiritual warfare with this person like at least with a man <laughs> it's it's just physical warfare there is no games <laughs> but dude i mean like i couldn't even like a man's breath oh and then you want to like lick that shit oh right i could never it's just it's too like gross and warm like get get your fucking nasty breath away from me <laughs> but that's like that's what they're attracted to and it's like dang it really isn't a choice so don't ever refute that you crazy people it's that'd be a weird choice to willingly accept like poopy penis and painful asses right and like gross man breath Nah, definitely, definitely not. Yep, yep. 
But anyways, um, the war in Israel, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we don't have to go back to that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. How about, uh, let's see, I went to F1 on Sunday, the F1 race. Yeah, dude, you and your YouTube channel are like, it's everywhere now, dude. Yeah. Fuck you. I know it. It's, so are you uh, watching motorcycles exciting. or? No, nah, F1 is the uh, the hyped up super racers. I, I know what F1 is, but I thought it was an F1 track. It is. It, it's built for F1, but they also have MotoGP on it. Which is motorcycles. Which Yeah, motorcycles. Same like concept, but just motorcycle. The best motorcycle you can build. And F1 is the best racing car that you can build. And uh, yeah, for me, like, I thought there was more action at MotoGP. There's more races. It's cooler to watch, you know? And I guess maybe I'm biased because I love motorcycles. But uh, there, there was only fucking two races at f1 on um, uh, at least on race day and the first race was just it was a bunch of souped up porsche gts it was like the porsche right. cup or whatever so that was kind of cool because you know those are sick ass cars um but you, you don't know any of the drivers <laughs> and uh and then like two hours goes by where nothing's happening and then finally the fucking race starts and they do like they do like 50 laps in this damn thing so i don't know for me i couldn't tell what the fuck was going on i didn't know who was in first <laughs> you know like nothing made sense it was also hot as shit i got sunburnt as fuck <laughs> that's wild dude and uh there was way more people way more people it was like uncomfortable and shit and like this family from baton rouge sat in front of us and they were just like the nerdiest fuckers ever and uh the it was like mom dad a uh, daughter and her husband or whatever the fuck and the chick kept turning around and talking to our blonde friend who's awful no with way yeah, like she straight up would not fucking stop talking to us. And uh, I noticed she was so ugly, dude. <laughs> and and uh, her face, like she had such bad wrinkles on her face. And she's young um, that like in, in between her eyebrows, uh, when her face was resting, it looked like a fucking vagina. Oh, because like, so. her skin like folded over each other. Oh, so when she wasn't like expressing an emotion, it was just vagina. <laughs> was she younger than us? Yeah, I'd say she was younger than us. Damn. So yeah, I was like, oh, I feel bad for you, sweetheart. <laughs> like, I'd call you vagina face every day. <laughs> you got a pussy on your face, girl. It's turning me on. Dude, it was bad. I was That's like, holy wild. shit. And they're just so corny. And I was like, please stop talking to me. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's the dilemma of being agreeable, where it's like, you don't want to be an outright asshole. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to be despondent. But it's like, man, I, my politeness has gotten me in so much uncomfortable situations where it's like, oof. I wish I could just be mean and just be like, yo, leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. Like, why are you talking to me, pussy face? Like, <laughs> you right? the hot looking bitch, go away. Your man is right there, dude. It's like, fuck. But yeah, it was, it was fun, but I'll never go again. And uh, yeah, I was sitting never there. Never go to F1 or you'll never go back to the Circuit of America? F1. Oh, okay. specifically it unless it's a free thing and i'm not going to be in the sun the whole time yeah um but yeah then i saw 
the fucking awesome. It was one of the crew guys that tends to track when there's an accident or whatever that they're in, you know, the racing suits. So all he did was put on, uh, the Halloween mask, Mike Myers and walked, walked Mike, down the Michael. Let's clarify. Mm. Mike Myers is Austin powers. Fuck. You're right. <laughs> Mike, Michael Myers. <laughs> uh, and he was just walking down, dragging a shovel and, uh, I barely got a glimpse because as you see in the video, people just walk right in front of you, stop, and they're like, wow. And they don't give a shit what's happening on behind them. And uh, so I barely got it, but it kind of looked cool. I don't know. looked like it was natural. No, it fits pretty well with the, like, uh, the jumpsuit. The Yeah. Or they like mechanic suit where it's like that one piece navy blue. Right. That's that's his motif, man. That's his fucking costume. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So I got a little little reel of that and posted it on the YouTubes and first day it got like two hundred hundred views. Then I went to bed, and the next day it was like two point one thousand. Yeah, you're at like two point six, two point seven now. Yeah, but what are you gonna do with yeah. this new on YouTube? So I'm hoping here? it keeps going, and I'm gonna use it to our advantage. Apparently not, dude. We're not getting any traffic off that. You just want it. <laughs> yeah. You just want it all for yourself, well, dude gonna leave me no man yeah, yeah i've well, been thinking leave me like everyone else does dude <laughs> what the fuck yeah dude 2.9 you're about to hit three grand dude yeah and fucking youtube like two or three days later was like congratulations you've gotten two thousand views what <laughs> i was like damn super late <laughs> weird that's cool though man yeah i'm psyched i've never had that much success with any sort of video so it's yeah, pretty fucking dope neither have i dude um i think right what we're sitting at on our channel is like a thousand something for our like most popular video yeah yeah, still good. We oh, appreciate sure. all not, those numbers. I'm not at all bitching about that. That shit's great. Yeah, I it's just like wish crack, though, the you cookie know? song would blow up. Like, <laughs> you can't force it, Coyote. Don't it's be forcing bullshit, it. Bullshit, dude. You know how long it took me to write that song? The audience knows when you're trying to force it. Well, yeah. And then they reject I've never forced anything but a poop, dude. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. But yeah, that's very exciting shit, and I'm very grateful. And I'm brainstorming all sorts of cool stuff that we can do, and really want to kick it into gear, man, and fucking make the some irony. shit happen. The irony of taking three weeks <laughs> to do a podcast and then saying, yeah, I'm ready to kick it in gear. <laughs> well, given everything that's happened in two weeks, you know, that's that's why I wasn't on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but uh, in the midst of all your sadness, you went to F1. <laughs> yeah, I was invited <laughs> on a whim. <laughs> yeah, I invited you to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, wasn't as cool, okay? Yeah. <laughs> your YouTube channel all of a sudden blows up. But yeah, not my YouTube channel, our YouTube channel, not as important, dude. <laughs> Fuck you. But it's all good, dude. It's all good. I see where your priorities lie. You like pussy-faced Baton Rougeans. 
<laughs> you want some Cajun uh, in your life, yeah. dude? I get it. No, I don't. That old base no. seasoning, man, good. It's real good. Get some Creole. I don't care how good of a cook she is. Ain't doing it. Yeah, I mean, they eat essentially bugs. So it's like, eh. Right, I'll, crawfish? Yeah, crawdads are gross, dude. I don't Not, get it. It's like the tiniest little fucking piece of meat. I mean, it's and, it's freshwater shrimp, essentially. Or freshwater lobster, actually. But Yeah. <clears throat> it's... I mean, the same thing can be said about people who eat shrimp, which I don't fuck with seafood at all. Um, Lame. I mean, it is what it is, man. If they were out of the water, you wouldn't look for a second to eat those things. Ever. Yeah, I get it. It looks like a fucking bug. No, it is a bug. It just adapted to water instead of fucking land. Yeah. That's a bug, my friend. How many legs does it have? What does it do? Like, it's a bug. Yeah. And then there's big bugs like lobsters and crabs, but it's still a bug, my dude. You're eating fucking spiders and <laughs> rub worms. Like, tastes yeah, good, it's it so, so yummy. Good. We boiled them. Fucking then, yesterday, since your bitch asked him to answer the phone... Oh, I, uh, I'm sorry that I'm sleepy boy. Whatever, dude. I'm a sleepy boy. Fuck you, dude. I was sleepy too, and I'm kind of happy you didn't answer the phone because uh, I, uh, I went to bed at like seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was but, like, as I was falling asleep, I was like, he said five, and I was like, he's going to be super tired, dude. There's no <laughs> way he's going to call me. I was like, good night, world. Good yeah. night. Yeah, and you straight up did not answer. <laughs> oh, man. I kept turning you off like my alarm. I was like, why do I have an alarm set for 5 p.m.? Yeah. This is weird. What did I do, like four calls? Just three. Quite exaggerated, okay. dude. It felt like four. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I did. I took some fat dabs, and I laid in my fresh, clean bed, and... uh I watched this new documentary on Netflix, which is about like the origins of life and shit. And it was super fucking trippy. Cool. And they talk about that with the crustaceans and, and shit and like, like the ocean, everything in the ocean survived. It's like closest to the origins of life than land animals. Cause of, you know, weather and shit, they're shielded from it. Right, and like mass extinctions and right. But um yeah, they showed this huge I guess the very first shrimp was an apex predator, like the first apex predator, and it was badass like <laughs> he's huge, just fucking cruising around that's sick fucking dude. people up and and the first uh the first squids or octopus had like shells on the top of their heads like fucking skyscrapers there was i don't know how many feet tall like 60 feet tall so they just look ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> floating around and shit it's really really fucking cool <laughs> good yeah. good stuff to smoke to and and watch well there's, there's a lot of funny ass things about evolution that like like whales and animals with blowholes because they're mammals, right? Yeah. So what it means is that they evolved to eventually escape water. And then as they, they became basically like this weasel dog type animal. Mm -hmm. And then like, yeah, fuck that. I'm going back to the ocean. And then they yeah. slowly evolved into whales. That's right. Back into the ocean. Like, fuck this, dude. This is overrated, guys. <laughs> yeah. it's It was really interesting. Yo, you should look up... Uh, it's called a... 
Eurypterid. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, but it's an eight foot water scorpion, aquatic scorpion. Hmm. That could get, that could go about 10 to 13 feet a second. Holy shit. And it's about 470 million years old. But woo! Yeah, how terrifying that shit would be, dude. Yeah, there's so many fucking creatures from back then that would scare the shit out of you. Luckily, they were all killed off. Well, I mean, that's a weird thing to say. I don't know if it's yeah. lucky, but it's definitely, well, I mean, we're definitely lucky we don't encounter them. Yeah, that's what I mean. But it's like, I don't know, elephants, pretty fucking scary when looked at through the lens of like, that's a giant creature with horns coming out of its face and like a snake for a nose. Mm -hmm. Rhinos. Same thing. Terrifying. Hippos. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Like that's cute because he's fat, but terrifying. There's lots of shit that's scary. Oh yeah. We're just out they're just out there trying to live, man. <laughs> yeah, same same for us. Yeah. But but yeah, it was a trippy stat that they say uh ninety nine percent of species that have ever existed on earth have been extinct and the one percent is what you see today yeah isn't that fucking insane i mean it makes sense though like yeah what what ancient animals do we have right um sharks crocodiles Horseshoe uh, crabs. What's, um, what's that shell one? Horseshoe crab. No, not horseshoe crab. The circle shell that looks like Ammonite Pokemon. Horseshoe <sighs> crab. They're not fucking horseshoe crabs, dude. It's a horseshoe crab. Look up a horseshoe crab. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> it's a horseshoe crab. <laughs> Um, remember we saw one when y'all, you and other man came to visit me when I was dying. Yeah. Yeah. Horseshoe crab is one. Oh yeah. Jellyfish. Jellyfish were like the first creatures to inhabit the ocean for a while. Yeah. Jellyfish are cool. Cause they're like. Yeah, I don't think we need brains. I'm like, really? I'm like, yeah, dude. yeah. Let's just have a nervous system. Like, okay. Like, are you uh, sure we don't need brains? Like, yeah, dude. Let's just float. Okay. Yeah, the creature I was talking about is the the Nautilus or the Nautilidae. It's like, you know what I'm talking about? It has the. It's like a typical fossil that you find with the swirl yeah shell. oh ominite yeah. not uh kabuto or not kabuto but uh fuck what is its name wasn't ominite his name <laughs> yeah well no there's another one that yeah ominite is definitely what you're talking about i was talking about Fuck, what is the horseshoe crab Pokemon? Oh. Um, fuck. I know he evolves to like K something. Kabuto. I was right. K Kabuto. Tops. Kabuto. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Kabutops. Yes. And then yeah. Aerodactyl. What? Um, Aerodactyl. He doesn't evolve into Aerodactyl. Thought he did. No, you're thinking of the fossils. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because fossils 
What are you we can... talking about? <laughs> Pokemon. Shut up. I like Pokemon. <laughs> Aerodactyl so, yeah. is just, um, just one of the legendary Pokemon. Right. Such like uh, Zapdos. Um, what was it? There's Zapdos. There's. there's yeah. uh, Aerodactyl Ar is an extinct flying Pokemon. Yeah, Aerodactyl's a fossil one. The Zapdos is the electric. Um, Articuno is ice slash water. And um, what's the fire? Moltres. Mol Moltres. Fuck yeah, dude. Pokemon rocks. Yeah. I just recently learned, I think his name is James Davis. Maybe it's Jamie Davis. Let me verify his name real quick. Um, I got to take a piss real quick up here. No, no, wait. It's important. I got to pee. Okay, go. Fuck you. Go. <laughs> so I was completely wrong about the name. Um, still ha I don't know who. There we go, Jason Page, Jamie Davis. Why the fuck did I say that? Jason Page was the singer of the original Pokemon, and he was a backup singer for Michael Jackson. How fucking cool is that? Unless you like, you know, know a thing or two about. Michael Jackson, but I also learned about this really cool turtle called Cinemies Gamera, and it's a turtle that has like jet wings from its shell. No idea what the use of those would be, but it's fucking cool, dude like fire pilot turtle sorry about that no you missed some cool facts that i'm not going to repeat because only viewers on the podcast will get to hear it that's fine yeah it's about turtles and pokemon but you wouldn't know anything about that because you decided to go pee and ruin the entire podcast dude it's not my fault. I got to stay hydrated in this hot ass state. Okay. Well, dude, it's actually weird. Like, we still haven't had snow. Really? Yeah. Apparently, they said there will be snow Saturday and Sunday, but I don't believe them. You know what? They said that for here, too. But and I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it, it will be seven degrees on Sunday. So wow. I think there might be a high chance of that. But yeah. I mean, we're months behind schedule. Like literally months. So I don't know what the fuck is happening. That's fine. I mean, you I'll take it... a moderate snow or a moderate winter for my last winter. But yeah, the Pacific Northeast is no, not the Pacific Northeast. The Atlantic Northeast is going to have a real hard time. At least that's what's predicted that there are going to be some incredible super winter storms. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've heard that too since it was so hot. This summer is supposed to have crazy fucking. Super cold, super uh, freezing winter, but it's just been raining all yeah. week here. But I mean, that's like that's based off old, like uncle pre internet logic. Well, since it was super hot this summer, it's going to be cold winter. And yeah. It's like you can, you can predict all these cycles. And it, it's not like this. You know, America's not split 
their weather patterns aren't based on like latitude and longitude. It's like, it's not this grid, sort of like a wave. Mm -hmm. And that heat pushes shit up towards like New York, Virginia, Maine, Massachusetts. And that is where you'll get. Cause it all comes in cycles and i think like the last cycle was do you remember that super storm that happened fuck it was was it like 2008 or something i don't remember but do you remember like how the northeast just got fucking hammered by this weird winter storm one year it was all over the news this was a long time ago. No, I don't. All right, well, look at you, Mr. Worldly. My life has been pretty consistent with crazy storms. So, I don't know. You're going to have to be a little bit more specific. That's why I designated the region and the year. How much more specific can I get? I don't know what happened. They froze, lost yeah, power. We're talking like eight feet of snow, like daily. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, wild. I don't, I don't remember that. Um, all I, I know, know is motherfuckers say like, ah. Oh, it's fine. It's just part of the fucking weather pattern, and every single storm just keeps topping the the last. It's like okay, this year we're gonna have the worst fucking hurricanes, and next year we're gonna have the worst rainfall and the worst snowfall. Yeah, but and I mean that's the a hottest bit of, summer. That's a bit of hyperbole because it's like y'all haven't had a super winter since wasn't that two thousand twenty. I don't know. It's consistently freezing down here now. So yeah, like, well, that I'm talking fuck and... like you're that when everyone froze to death, that weird one. Yeah, that was two years ago. Yeah. So, I mean, it's been two years since that's happened. And so I don't think like it's safe I mean, to say that like it happens consistently and it gets worse and worse because. Y'all would all be dead. Well, it did freeze last year. It wasn't as bad, but it was it was bad in a different way. It's like it was misting, and it instead of being so cold, it froze pipes and caused all that damage. It was like misting and then freezing when it hit the trees. So all the fucking branches and shit fell off and all of central texas was covered in tree debris everywhere it was like millions and millions of pounds of fucking branches and shit that we had to chop up and get rid of i mean so but i mean growing up we got snow in central texas constantly almost every winter it snowed yeah, like one day though, right? It was just like a snow day and then it went back to just cold. Right, but it still froze. Like I don't know how you don't remember footballs on in the mornings where like everything hurt. Oh, I remember it well. So I mean yeah. obviously I'm not I'm not taking the slant of like climate change is fake. I'm just saying like it's pretty consistent, I would say. <laughs> like, there was a few years where like shit was so fucked up that, like, the fires burnt basically the entire state, and we yeah. would just get surrounded. But, you know, our our formative years, lots of snow in Central Texas. Yeah, consistently every year. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I guess I'm not like supporting global warming. I'm just saying that the storms and shit are getting 
stronger and crazier and fucking you just don't know what you're gonna get that's true i guess but you can you know meteorology is pretty like you know down to a science you you can kind of predict what you're gonna get yeah They're predicting that you and i are gonna have very mild winters in yeah rel relation to what the northeast is gonna get because they're there's a potential that they get fucked. Yeah. Which is going to be great because I've never too much cared for the people over there. Um, yeah. I've never been up there. Hey, you're not missing much. Lots of really unkind people. <laughs> um, lots of like snobbish dickheads. Yeah, I mean it's kind of like a uh, a weird dichotomy of like completely like sniff their own farts snobby and like the dirtiest humans on the planet from the streets. So hmm. it's a weird combination of people, which right. yeah, I mean you kind of get that everywhere in major cities nowadays. Yeah, I'd have to. That reminds me of Austin. Yeah, it's exactly <laughs> Walking like downtown. That. You'll get those snobby motherfuckers that are just too cool for everyone, and right next to him is a homeless man asking yep. for a dollar. And then mad at you. <laughs> fuck you, piece of shit. Like, what the yeah, fuck? yeah, it's, it's a weird. Wild. uh You know, I'm not too. Uh, not to slip this one under the rug, but uh, I'm going to be happy to leave. <laughs> yeah. It, I don't blame you, man. It's it's crazy out here. And yeah, I got Who it. knows what's going to happen. You know, since, <laughs> since you selfishly took the entire podcast to talk about your life and didn't ask me a single thing about mine, I guess I'm just going to have to to talk about it. Yeah, uninvited, but I'll still talk about it. Please. I got, I got fucked up by my family, like, because I've been real depressed and real sad. Yeah. And, you know, just it's all on the basis that, like, I don't have food. And so, yeah, know, that shit sucks. Yeah. And so when you go to week three, on nothing but ramen noodles it fucking sucks dude and you start like you don't have enough energy or nutrients to like function properly yeah and so i got a concerned call from my mom like yeah you don't sound like you're okay I'm like all right i'll be honest like i'm not and Boy, was that, I guess, the wrong thing to say. It was, fuck, I got exploded on. I was like, what? Yeah. The fuck? I'm like, well, you're teaching me to be dishonest, which I can do. Like, you're the reason I was homeless for my teenage years. So, like, I have no problem cutting you out of my life. Like, it's not that hard. Right. We've been there, done that. And so... I was just like, yeah, I'm, you know, only got ramen and I don't have money, so I don't have food. And just immediately, I was like, why the fuck don't you work? I'm like, oh, God, we're back to this shit again? I'm like, yeah, I know you can get a job. It's like, all right, well, I apply everywhere, but all right, you're right. You know better than I do, you fucking boomer. Of and course, it's it's easy. Yeah, super easy. Just get a job and buy a house. The and the, the funniest thing is, like, yo, you didn't work like the first like twelve years of my life. So that doesn't like, matter. She had children to take care of. Right, right, right. But it's like uh, it was the nineties. Yeah, <laughs> so, like 
the economical height of America. Yeah. When things were cheap, things were abundant, people were complacent. There was no fuck. Well, there, all right, there were wars, but not any that they had to experience. Right. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Gesundheit. I'm, I'm allergic to bullshit. <laughs> <clears throat> so I was just like, just like taking this beating. And I was just like, what the fuck? Like, this is weird. And so I had to basically. It, it was just the weirdest thing because it was like for months has been nothing about nothing but like it's going to be great when you go to Vietnam like you're going to have such a good time and finally be able to experience life like with the money that you make now yeah and all of a sudden like on a dime it's like you're just running away from your problems because you don't want to work this is exactly how you were in high school it's like what the fuck like you're just bringing up like 20 year old fucking trauma wow like dude this is fucking wild and like it doesn't help that she's fucking insane like certifiably yeah because she's like she's like what do you think we come to earth for it's like i don't fucking know she's what? like it's it's to love and to spread kindness. Like, what the fuck? It's like, and so you're not allowed to feel like that. You're not allowed to have hate. I was like, what the fuck Whoa. is going on? So you need to agree to do all of these fucking like mystical like rituals with her. Like using a pendulum using this frequency machine oh my god and i was like and mind you this was like an hour of just getting yelled at and talked over and i just kept repeating i haven't raised my voice i haven't hung up on you whatever you're like going through right now is not on me dude mm-hmm. <laughs> so whatever you Whatever you're doing is weird. But, you know, this is the person that I have to stay with before I move to Vietnam. So it's like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, man. And it was the weirdest thing because, like, I was like, this was, like, a month prior to that. I was like, ah, I won't be able to get my passport for, like, probably another month or so until, like, I can sell some stuff and... She was like, do you need help? I was like, well, yeah, but I'm not going to accept help from you. She's like, no, I insist. I was like, no, nah, that's fine. So like, mm-hmm. no, let me do this. Like, it'll make me feel better. It's like, okay, fine. And it took her over a month. Still hasn't helped me. But I'm getting yelled at for the help that she hasn't helped me with yet. Like, yeah, because you got to pay. Nothing's like, free. I'm like, what the fuck? At least like from a boomer. But, but it's like, you haven't helped me. So it's like, why are you yelling at me for the help that I haven't received yet? And <laughs> so I'm just getting bombarded with shit. Like, why don't... like You you do know that all you have to do is ask the, the guiding angels and you'll get whatever you want. It's like, what... <laughs> Well, tell them to send me some money, please. Like, Make me win the lottery. <laughs> it Go was ahead. just the weirdest experience I've ever had feeling like a teenager again. And it's like, you right. no right. Like, you're, I'm welcoming you into my life and I can cut you out at any point. I'm not worried about that. I want a relationship with my family. But I already know what it's like to not have one. And I already know what it's like for y'all to hate me. So right. it's like, it's really no big deal to switch back to that. Because I'm moving halfway across the world. And uh, I've got no qualms with it. And she was pissed that I didn't live in Texas. 
And I, I mean, I didn't have the heart to tell her that it's like, why the fuck do you think I'm like as far away as possible from y'all? Yeah. Does it make any sense? You know, I can come back for holidays, but I never have once. You know, you could come visit me, but you never have once. It's like, it's not really like y'all fucked up. I fucked up. No more yeah. relationship. The end. I'm getting yelled at as if like we're like this close family unit. And it's like, eh. yeah, you forget, sweetheart. Like I can ghost better than anybody. And I'll be out this bitch fast as fuck. If you, I'm like a I'm like a coyote that gets spooked in the middle of the night. Like what? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm out, dude. Gone, dude. You won't even see me. That's so weird, man. It's the most bizarre circumstances because it's like I was being open and I was being honest, something that I've been trying to be better about. Like, you know, being honest that like, hey, I'm not feeling good or hey, I'm like in a bad spot. And mm -hmm. to be punished for that, it's like, yo, what kind of fucking precedent are you trying to set? Just the typical hypocriticalness of yeah. that generation and not being able to control their own emotions and fucking putting that trauma on to other people and, yeah. you know, blaming them. It's just, it's fucking all over the place. You see it all over. And, like, even my mom, uh, I hadn't talked to her in months months bro like almost a year probably and she finally called me to ask hey did you talk to your brother who's in israel w what's going on what'd you hear what'd you hear Just, that's what she called me for okay cool yeah appreciate <laughs> like, it i haven't talked to you in almost a year um thanks for being so involved in my life that you have to call about my brother <laughs> yeah you're such a caring mother <laughs> and well, that's why like it's just weird because I know for a fact my parents had good easy lives and they made sure to end that streak with me and it's like that's the opposite of child rearing that's the opposite of bringing a person into the world. You, you want your children to have a better life than you had. Not one with more strife, not one with more trauma and drama and problems. Or equal to. Well, yeah, if you had a good life, <laughs> let's give the kid a good life. And they're so convinced that like, I was the issue. And it's like, yo... One, I was a teenager. Two, you were in your fucking 50s. So maybe, just maybe take a little bit of responsibility. Yeah. And uh, my mom said she reached a point in her life where she'll never apologize for anything again. And I was like, all right, well, you missed a point in your life where you apologized to me for making me sleep on the fucking ground for making me sleep in public bathrooms for making me sleep in a fucking parking lot of the school so I wouldn't be late for school. Yeah. And she's completely gaslit herself to think it's my problem because like I didn't have a job during the 2008 financial crisis. <laughs> <laughs> Like, uh, while you were going to school while i was going to school <laughs> while i was dealing with an insane human for a parent right. while i was dealing with homelessness like <laughs> yo you're fucking out of your mind lady yeah and this is the sole reason this podcast is anonymous like so i can actually talk about this shit without feeling like she's fucking listening because yeah. she retires in like a week She's going to have nothing to do because she doesn't know. Like, she never planned for retirement. 
like financially yeah but she never planned on things to do and oh like, boy like yeah what the fuck how do you not have dreams right do i the... know i know exactly what the fuck i would do if i didn't have to work for a living <laughs> yeah yeah i already i have so many good ideas <laughs> like yeah <laughs> It's wild, dude. It's my fantasy, man. But I'm in the realm, and most of us in our generation are, that we're going to be just like these fuckers that won't retire because we can't afford to retire. Yeah. And we're just going to be fucking working. There's no such thing as, like, an affordable house. No. Fuck no sucks it's a real fucking bummer it's just like shitty times yeah dude that's shitty another shitty. another issue that i have with the family because they're convinced that like trump has enacted martial law before the last election and that it's all that's just wrong. this big fraud and that like he's cleaning up the swamp and oh god the people are having like secret military tribunals and being replaced and eventually we're going to be all super rich because we're like separating from the united corporation of america i'm like I, <laughs> I love a good fantasy man like i love a good conspiracy too but it's like at what point do you stop believing that shit it's the next election like it's already here. Like, yeah. How have you not conceded that it's not true? Like how right. all of these people are pleading guilty for interrupting the election and trying to fucking claim fraud when there was no fraud and all these people are going down and testifying and shit. But and now I mean, like I don't I don't think anything's going to happen in terms of Trump whether he's guilty or not like realistically Trump is most likely going to be the president again like no one because the people that want a like a good hardworking politician that is for the people they're not going to go for Trump. They're not going to go for Biden. And yeah. So what, what that happens is you've like basically remove those people from the vote entirely. So now what does it leave you with? It leaves you with bleeding heart liberals that only toe the party line. And it leaves you with MAGA. And MAGA has more numbers. It's just the facts. No one, like the people that didn't want Trump in office, that solely voted for Biden because they didn't want to see Trump in office. That those was me. Those people are not going to re-vote for Biden. Nope, I will not. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> remove <fucked> yourself. <laughs> remove yourself from the equation, and what it leaves you with. Trump's fan base has only gotten stronger. And his mugshot. Maybe. It, no, it's a fact. And I know you're not plugged mm. into this, but it's a fact. He got a 10 point poll boost for posting his mugshot. No one is leaving the, the Trump base, dude. It's only getting stronger. Yeah, he's, he's over here comparing himself to Nelson Mandela and shit. And. <laughs> Let me tell you, like, that's that's one of the hard facts that people don't want to accept is that he's popular and he's becoming more popular the more trouble he gets in because he's to his supporters, it's a confirmation of how corrupt mm -hmm. politics are. It's not a confirmation of how corrupt he is, but to the the naysayers it's a confirmation of how corrupt he is but they were already voting for biden anyways 
So that number doesn't change. But then you get people like RFK, right? Or Ron DeSantis. So RFK is like an old school liberal. Like, so the people that were, that voted for Biden typically that just didn't want Trump in, they'll most likely vote for RFK and be like, yeah, I, I like what he stands for because I'm plugged in and I like, you know, his stance on things. Mm -hmm. And then the hardcore Republicans that don't support MAGA, they're like, well, no, I like Ron DeSantis. Like, I like what he's about. Right. Like, I'll never support MAGA. So now, now you've taken two ginormous voting pools and removed them from who would typically go to Biden. And you've got yourself a recipe for t Trump 2024. Yeah, totally. And, you know, it's that's the reality of things. And you just try to have to accept it. Like we all knew it was coming. We all fucking knew. We were like, I don't know who they're going to put up next election, but I swear to God, if they just need a normal person and then that motherfucker would win. But they didn't do it. No, they came, of out, with the, they came not. out with the same old fucking stupid shit. And it's both parties' faults. Well, Everybody, yeah. all Americans should be shamed. Oh, <laughs> all right. Not all Americans. American <laughs> politics, because red door, blue door, you still, it's to the same building, bro. Like, yeah. Everyone's bought, everyone is controlled by some special interest group. It's, you know, I get it. The money needs to be out of politics because there is no politician that's for the people besides right. maybe RFK. And we know what happens to Kennedy's when they get a little too comfortable and a little too supportive of the people. That's right. They get shot. And RFK was already there's already been an attempted assassination on him. Jeez, so, really? Yeah. And Biden, his administration refused to give RFK Secret Service, which is unprecedented. Any presidential candidate gets Secret Service security. like, And so Makes RFK sense. had to hire his own security out of his own fucking pockets. And they caught the guy, which is cool. Um, they caught the guy before he was shot, so that's neat. But it's still Good. terrifying. Like, Hell yeah. And then, you know, you get into, like, known conspiracy realities where it's, like, corruption at all places, murder in all places. Like, then it's like, oh, fuck, dude, this is a dirty fucking game. Like, yeah. We, we do need to clean the swamp, but I'm talking, like, mass executions like public on display in the gallows and basically all of them and you have a great reset of like no more lobbying no more corporations have you know the rights of humans yeah no more donations from any corporation big oil big pharma nothing that's that's what I don't understand and what really drives me crazy about politics is like it's illegal to bribe people and anybody can go to jail for it but we allow companies and organi organizations to bribe our politicians in, in the form of lobbying Right. And well, that's how the system fucking works. Well, here's the thing. And this is how, you know, billionaires get away with, like, not paying taxes and stuff. So it's all about legal loopholes. That's, that's how all of this stuff is happening. It's not as if it's mm -hmm. not happening under our, our noses. It's happening in broad daylight through legal loopholes. Like... Totally. Amazon hasn't been, you know, it wasn't 
turning in profit for the first like 20 years of his existence. And by not turning in profit, then it doesn't have to pay taxes. So what does that mean? It means buying up smaller companies. It means reinvesting into the company. Meanwhile, you know, Jeff Bezos is able to make billions of billions of dollars because Amazon's not profitable. So the money's going back to pay quote unquote employees, right? So that's a legal loophole in the tax code. A legal loophole in bribing is speaker fees. So like a company like Shell could put on an event and hire, let's say Hillary Clinton, right? Hey, come, come give a speech at our event. All right. We'll pay you a million dollars in speaking fees. Cool. What do you want me to talk about? Well, here are some things that we want to happen in the future in politics. And, you know, we did just give you a million dollars. And that's basically what it comes down to is that there's always going to be people looking for those holes. And sure. it's a hard thing to sort of get out of politics. It has yeah, to it's... happen, but it's way easier said than done because you get rid of lobbying, you still have speaker fees. You yeah. get rid of speaker fees, then you you run the risk of violating the Constitution. Yeah, I definitely don't have the answer <laughs> to fix our system, but... I do. It's public mass execution. It's... <laughs> Having, You're like on the French Revolution side here. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. Because the thing is, unless these people face consequences and unless these people are scared of violating the rights of Americans, they'll never stop. It's never going yeah. to stop. People, there, there are a few things we could do. Tie the deficit to government employees payroll so if every politician had an incentive to keep the deficit down we wouldn't have any spending like we do now if we made it illegal for politicians to trade stocks there would be no insider trading there would be no like advantage to lobbying like special interest groups special companies getting special contracts yeah easy if I we put term limits and age restrictions on every role in politics yeah said once you hit 65 you're done you're out of politics you are no longer allowed to serve right retire easy. bitch easy dude and that would fix 80 to 90 percent of the problems that we have you know what i want to take away i want to take away the free health care for politicians or the lifetime health care that they get y'all motherfuckers should be paying the same shit that us americans down here at the bottom are paying that way you can realize that it's fucked up yeah and maybe you should fucking do something about it <laughs> Seems a little hypocritical, huh? Just saying. We yeah. can expand hospitals all we want, but if motherfuckers can't afford to go there, there's no point in expanding the fucking hospital. <laughs> yeah, and you know, there's a huge deficit of you know workers because they saw how mistreated they were during the pandemic and they're like, dude, fuck this. Like Yeah. No one wants to get into the field anymore. They're like, well, so now we're going to have a huge healthcare crisis in the next 10 years where there's not going to be enough supply for the demand. Mm -hmm. And insurance companies are going to crater because no one's going to pay health insurance anymore. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm still in collections 
because of my fucking suicide attempt over a year ago that was paid by the VA. But the hospital was like, nah, dude, we'll still send it to collection. I was like, all right, thanks, fellas. And so now yeah. it's like this whole ordeal of trying to track down like a claim through from the government to this company. And the company is now not the holder of the debt. They've sold it off because they were impatient. And it's like, all right, y'all completely fucked me, but I'm out. I'm leaving. Yeah. The only reason I want to stay is to be like the leader of the fucking revolution and change all this shit. Because it's simple. It's real fucking easy to fix. But it's there's so much money in being dishonest in politics that it's like no one is going to change. You know, that that's yeah. what I keep reiterating to like my conspiracy theorist family where it's like you're relying on the corrupt to end corruption. That's not how it works. Yeah. The the people that are enriching themselves through corruption have no incentive to stop the corruption. Yeah. Have fun asking that millionaire for a handout. See what happens. Yeah. He ain't going to give it to you. No. And <laughs> the thing is that it's completely shifted from like, it used to be, you know, the, the Cox, the Rothschilds, the Rumsfeld, maybe not Rumsfeld. It's uh, Rothschilds, um, you know, a bunch of like really. Wasn't rich. Vanderbilt one of them too? Or? Yeah, for sure. It, it used to be these rich families, these legacy families that had a bunch of control and over the corruption. Yeah. You know, they could fund political groups, they could fund corporations, but they're only billionaires. And now what it is, is it's these trillion dollar companies that because a billionaire to a trillionaire is fucking nothing, dude. Yeah. So, so now like the company BlackRock owns right around 50% of all homes in America. A company. That's the reason we're in this situation that we're in right now. A company. Right. So then there's BlackRock, there's Vanguard, and there's something state. And they own almost 90% of every stock in the SP 500. That's an issue. But the amount of influence that they have is unprecedented because they can turn these politicians into millionaires overnight. Just give them a little fucking, just give them a little power. Let them have their policies favor them. And that's it. You're a millionaire overnight because a million dollars to a trillionaire is fucking less than a hundred dollars, dude. Like, right. Chump change. And it's scary, dude, because like, how do you fight a machine like that? That is Luke versus the entire empire by himself, dude. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Um, well, would you like to end the podcast with some movie trivia? Ooh, yeah, dude. That, that's an I one of the ideas that I thought of, of like, since you're the fucking film buff, I'm going to try and break you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, break me, dude. <laughs> Now that you're down and depressed and starving and shit. Yeah, man. Exactly what I need. Further. <laughs> but yeah, and also maybe we should do like a, a coyote 
GoFundMe or something, and our viewers can send you five bucks. No, I can't do that. One, we don't no. have we don't have that many viewers. But two, like, I'm not. I'm pretty sure they'll do it. No, I'm not going to ask them for money ever. Um, they're already supporting us enough through just watching and subscribing. That's enough. Um, yeah. You know, like, yeah, but the, the sad reality. Money. No, we don't. We don't need their money. <laughs> uh, we need BlackRock's money. We need. We need them to fund us to pump like propaganda. Because if that made us millionaires overnight, it'd be hard to have fucking morals, dude. Be like, eh, yeah. I don't know, dude. Maybe the open border is a good policy. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I've just been, uh, I've just been like really getting into like Buddhism and Taoism again, where it's just like, I can handle the hard times and you know, it's okay. I've already like, I have basically nothing left now in terms of like possessions. Every single video game system is gone. Um, most of my furniture is gone. Just trying to like eat, you know? Um, yeah. So it's like, fuck it. That's that's where I'm at in life. I'm not about to have a fucking a like, hey, I'm having a hard time. Please help me. It's like, that's fine, man. Let's get to movie trivia, dude. I don't like being sad. Don't break right. me anymore, dude. I probably won't know a single thing about these movies either. Okay. <laughs> this is pretty good. All right. The code in the matrix comes from what food recipes? Sushi, dumplings, stir fry, or pad thai? Um, sushi. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Like, well, I figure what? it had to be Japanese since it's Japanese. Like, since, since it's vertical or like... No. I don't, I don't mean, even know what the fuck they're talking about. It's, it's <laughs> really easy to distinguish between Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. Um, yeah. So, like... Just rule of thumb, Chinese has a lot of vertical and horizontal lines. Right. Japanese has a lot of angular, like, swooshes. And circles, right? No. It doesn't no, have a circles single. Circles is circle. Korean, sorry. And circles is Korea. My bad. Yeah, so it's really English, easy to distinguish. Yeah, Japanese, I picture the dude with the brush... And he's like make him really nice exactly you know, check marks yeah yeah so all and right kan kanji is cool because there's no english equivalents and it, it basically dictates an emotion that is felt as you're saying what comes before or after so like kanji is really interesting um, yeah that's what's on like goku and gohan's geese those little symbols they're like right the, the house of go or like the on house. their backs yeah fun fact about dragon ball z that i didn't know i randomly found out the other day is uh kame kameha yeah the king of hawaii is a king of hawaii yeah fuck yeah the wife of the creator of dragon ball z i guess Wanted him to name it after the King of Hawaii. I don't. I didn't really deep dive into it. I just. I was like, wait a minute, Kame Kamea. I was like, I know that. <laughs> yeah, the King Kamehameha. <laughs> yeah, um, super cool. Yeah, so the in Dragon Ball lore, the creator of the Kamehameha wave is Master Roshi, who is the Turtle Hermit. Who lives on a secluded island? Uh huh. So it all 
kind of connect. Oh, a hint. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Well, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a not so cool question, which okay. is creepy. Who actually drew the sketch of Rose in Titanic? James Cameron, my friend. James fucking Cameron. How weird. <laughs> is it, though? Because it's like, would you rather him look like creepily behind the lens of a zoom camera where you could just zoom into all those pubes and nipples or would you prefer him to be drawing some artistic take on a naked woman you know like yeah would you rather hire a random artist to draw your dick and balls or would you rather a guy that you have been working with for like six months yeah, I guess if when you put it like that. Yeah, but I mean, my, let, let me establish my stance. I don't think any movie has ever benefited from nudity. Like, that's not a prude take. It's just no movie benefits from nudity. Like, it just doesn't. Yeah, it's like an extra cherry on top. No, I don't think... I think it's a net negative for movies to have nudity. Like, huh yeah interesting um if you want to be aroused there's pornography or there's you know real life sex if yeah you want nudity in your movie it makes no sense whatsoever um well, what about uh have you seen frida uh with selma hayek yes <laughs> no i haven't um i watched it i know frida like yeah she, great artist yeah i mean in the movie there's a shitload of nudity and but it like goes with the theme and story and everything and it's like an artistic like you know viewing the body from a artistic way of looking at the beauty of it right and i don't so, think that's necessary in film is what i'm saying um mm -hmm. You know, you have a point. There's such thing as skin tight clothes that accentuates all of the beauty of the body that doesn't make a woman or man feel vulnerable on camera in front of 30 odd random people that will then be shown to millions of people for life. I just don't think there's any positive you can draw from it. Like, yeah. I hear you. It is very distracting. Yeah, because it's like <laughs> you've got to think about intent. What is the intent of the nudity in this scene? Yeah, It's not to accentuate the beauty of the human form. It's to arouse people. How get... about uh, how about forgetting Sarah Marshall when he's naked during it, their breakup? I think... <laughs> it would have been just as effective to shoot him from the waist up though i right. will admit it's a good giggle but i think that's about it well no i think that's a net negative that like women are seen as beautiful when they're naked while men are seen as like yeah gross or like awkward a joke, right yeah. like it sucks, dude, because it's like I don't like having this prudish standpoint about it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I I, I know what you mean though, because I've I've seen nudity in theater, and I was like, that was fucking totally unnecessary. Absolutely. <laughs> like, we could have done without the tits. Yeah, I'm not upset, but I'm just saying, like, the story would have been fine exactly <laughs> I, I just don't think it adds anything and i think it only produces a negative yeah. especially my... if it's a rape scene well you definitely don't want to see any nudity no 100 <laughs> percent. holy I think, shit <laughs> and for the most part i think you can tastefully do a rape scene that doesn't involve <laughs> showing anything of like thrusting or i think mm -hmm. it can all be implied and the effects are still very much there I, where's your class man where's your class well i think it's the result of very twisted people 
in front of and behind the lens that are like, yeah, this is gonna, this yeah. is gonna have some impact. When, you know, you could show like bloody panties on the ground, and that everyone's mind knows what that is like, and an aggressive man like zipping up his pants, walking mm -hmm. out of the room while a girl is laid there crying. Like, you get what just happened. And you don't need to see a fucking thing. Like, right. You know? And it's better that way because you're actually using your imagination to fill in those gaps. Right. And, and the horror story. Right. Yeah. And you, you place yourself a lot more in an empathetic role and in the shoes of the victims. Like, you know, when you when you do show nudity in those types of scenes, there is a percentage of people that see themselves as the abuser because, and it not maybe not intentionally at first, but because this is their first exposure to nudity. This is the first exposure to sex and thrusting. And so, you know, involuntarily they get turned on and then they see themselves as that person being, you know, doing horrific acts. And so if you remove that and just leave it as you need to empathize with the victim here, then there's far less likelihood of someone thinking that they're the bad person. Right. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with like, storytelling and filmmaking that people are just like fuck it dude titties <laughs> god the, the 80s were real bad with that like yeah real yeah, bad. they were yeah and the play i saw was uh a clockwork orange so it's very 80s vibes up in there goodness gracious and they showed nudity for that scene singing in the yeah. rape it was at the fringe festival in edinburgh okay well so they're really going all out and yeah europeans have a very different like view yeah. of sex it's much more liberal but yeah and i was just 17 i'm just like oh god right <laughs> awesome tits but oh rape and that's like yeah. the confusing part where it's like well it was awkward fuck out. And especially a rape scene in theater yeah Ew, dude i'm like sitting there with with some of my classmates and my theater directors over there. <laughs> it's just like just thinking titties. into it. Like, what the fuck did I do? Why don't we do nude scenes? Hey, we <laughs> should have live sex. <laughs> no. All right. Back to the musical truth. and musical <laughs> with nudity. <laughs> yeah. Instead of a hat, it's a big penis. It's the pussy in the hat. Love it. <laughs> um, true or false? Sean Connery wore a toupee in every James Bond movie. True. True. Very true. Holy fuck, that's weird. I know. I, I, I okay, I love Sean Connery as Bond, but I, I think uh, Roger Moore is fucking fantastic. Yeah. Uh, George Lazenby is great, but I mean, Pierce will always be our James Bond. Right. right right and daniel craig did a great job loved casino royale mm -hmm. you know opening scene fucking parkour like a motherfucker like shit's great tragic ending where it's like you you understand why bond doesn't get attached to women you understand yeah. how like <laughs> He never gets anyone pregnant because his balls were absolutely destroyed. Right. I was like, all right. Like, I I was worried, but I, I kind of like Daniel Craig as, as my bond, even though Pierce will always be my bond. Yeah, got to go with the golden eye, man. Oh, yeah, dude. Golden eye till I die. Giant space lasers and snowboards and fucking so cool, dude. Okay. Here's a good one. What item is in every Fight Club scene? A Coca-Cola can, a Starbucks cup, 
Starbucks cup. Yeah, a Starbucks cup. Yeah. Pretty, pretty good at this coyote. Good. Thanks, man. This is like, uh, you remember those AOL instant messenger like quizzes that people used oh, to yeah. have on their profile? Yeah. That's what it feels like. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing right here. <laughs> that's cool, man. It's nostalgic. I love Dude, it. Dude, those, those were awesome. They were because you could make them about yourself. Yeah, get your get your buddies to fill them out and shit and compare okay. at school. And then they would ask <laughs> me, like, wait, I thought your favorite superhero was Superman. I'm like, no, that's actually a common mistake. I only wear a Superman hoodie because yeah. I'm probably autistic and I wore it every day <laughs> of the year. But actually, Spider-Man is my favorite. It was right. a trick question. I understand that you didn't get it right. Surprise, we're all autistic. Surprise. <laughs> Woo. Uh, if you were to watch the Marvel movies in chronological order, which movie would you start with? The Captain I, Marvel. Um, wrong. All right. Well, let me hear the list. Okay. Iron Man. Captain America, the first Avenger. Captain Doctor America, Sh the first Avenger. Yeah. 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 You know, the one set in World War II? Pretty fucking... That was a, a softball, dude. Yeah, that's weird. I never realized that Marvel doesn't really fuck with time like that. They only went to the 40s. <laughs> yeah, and the end is them waking up Captain America in modern day. Right. So it's like... It could go both ways because it comes after Iron Man. But I mean, if we want to go back the furthest in time, then yeah. Yeah. Captain America, first Avenger, for sure. I think that one, I was like starting to really not give a fuck about superhero movies anymore. Once they started That's coming out with all those side movies. Well, no, that was the th third Marvel movie. It'd be pretty hard for you to... Was it? Stop. Yeah. That came out 2008, I think. Maybe... Hmm. No, maybe 2009. Uh, but yeah, that was in the beginning because it was Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2. Then it was Captain America. Then it was Thor. Then it was Iron Man 3. Then it was Avengers. Um, and prior to that, they had the Hulk, but that was made by Universal. So it was <laughs> in weird territory because it was like licensing. They licensed the Hulk so they could make Hulk part of the MCU. And then that's why you don't have... That's why there's never been another Hulk movie is because Universal still has the rights, but they don't have the rights to the Hulk showing up in other movies. Yeah. So anything that's not the Hulk movie, they can use the Hulk. But that's why there's not a single thing of the Hulk since 2008. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. And that's why Spider-Man is the same exact thing sony owns spider-man and they're like no nah, we're never giving you spider-man back bitch <laughs> you can't have them right so marvel's most successful movies in the mcu are all straight profit to sony like thanks fellas good job yeah the the number one mcu movie is uh spider-man no way home and it went straight to sony every yeah. last dime just fucking hilarious to me yeah and the only taste of success they've had lately is spider-man yeah and it's hilarious <laughs> dude yeah okay last one all right <laughs> some of the velociraptor noises in jurassic park are actually which animals mating tortoises Frogs, tortoises. lizards, or crocodiles, tortoises. Tortoises. tortoises, 
<laughs> that is hilarious. I never knew that. Yeah, dude. I've oh. seen tortoises oh. fucking real life, oh. and it is a hilarious noise, dude. It's like <laughs> this exasperate. It's it's exactly the velociraptor noise, but coming from like I don't know, like a GI Joe sized vocal cord. So it's soft. It's like really soft and really like weak. So it's just right. <laughs> it's so great, dude. I have seen videos of those like Galapagos yeah, tortoises dude. getting it on. It's fucking like there is nothing funnier than that shit. And that's so funny because, you know, us as kids watching Jurassic Park so scared during that scene, dude. dude so fucking scary and all it is is a bunch of tortoises having sex <laughs> well all right so like the like the scary velociraptor noises aren't like you know like there's two noises there's the hey i'm calling to my friends they're like mm -hmm. and then there's the other one that like almost like a jaguar sound yeah the scream yeah that's terrifying the like communication is terrifying but like on a like psychological level where yeah. it's like oh shit they're communicating gal. That really it's like <laughs> nah these are just tortoises fucking dude yeah all right well that's not as scary but it's still like on a psychological level like what is happening <laughs> yeah. I'm confused. It's, it's not a sound you hear every day. <laughs> no. Fuck, well, dude. Now you've made me want to talk all about Jurassic Park. I love Jurassic Park so much, dude. I know, man. Fuck. Yeah, we we had a, a nice long one today. Yeah, it was great. Fucking finally, man. We needed it though. Yeah, for real. I uh I was completely sleeping <laughs> when you yeah. called. Man, I'm I don't want to go and wake up, but yeah, it was yeah. worth it, dude. Well, hopefully it was worth it. No, 100%, dude. The The movie tree at the end is fun, dude. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to try. I was 10 for 10 or however many questions you asked me. Right. Yeah, I really want to try and like start writing like little monologues and shit and just like fun stuff to to bring to the podcast instead of just our random you know banter <laughs> yeah and well no i've and especially like taking a like buddhist approach to life where it's just like i don't i'm trying not to let this fucking like shithole political climate and identity politics like take over where i'm just bitching mm. about shit yeah and mind you i did bitch a lot about my family but you needed it though. It was totally just and <laughs> yeah, dude. It was wild. It's like what the fuck, man. So I just needed to get that out of my system real quick, but yeah, you know, yeah, it's nothing new. You know, oh I'm god, no. Unfortunately, but yeah, that's that's why we're buds. You know, it's like we we have our trauma and we bond over it. <laughs> yeah trauma bonding dude that's but in a positive yeah way, not you can't, a you negative can't trauma bond and then like not come up with solutions because that's just how you end up with toxic relationships yeah like you've got I mean, there's a reason why you and i have stayed friends even with all of our hiccups <laughs> and yeah. all these other people that continuously hit me up and i ignore them you know it's just it's more real. It's yeah. A real connection. Well, and it's <laughs> not superficial. It's not like, because it's like, it's justified when you're in a bad place because your fucking brother is stuck in Israel, right? It's right. not, it's not justified when people are in a bad place because they're having a bad time on Call of Duty. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, or they just, feel like they don't have enough time for you right and it's like what the fuck like 
how do you not have enough time when all you do is like nothing? Like seriously, you do nothing <laughs> and you still don't have time. So it's like, sorry, but prioritize friends a little bit, or you're gonna be left in your shit relationship. Sorry, yes sir. Yes sir, you need them. You gotta have a a homie out there. It's like sometimes I get comfortable and you know we spend a lot of time with your spouse and then you actually go hang out with a friend and you're like holy fuck i needed this <laughs> yeah dude. And, and it's just weird it's like you know nothing bad on your spouse but you, it's just that it, it's a different type of connection and, and well, you don't you don't realize how chipped away you've been when you're just hanging out with your spouse you don't realize that it's like, oh, fuck. Like, I'm not going to get yelled at for, like, doing nothing all day. Or, mm -hmm. like, I'm not going to, there's not going to be a big ordeal with me just relaxing and smoking some weed. It's like, nah, dude, come as you are. Yeah. That's who we want. Like, and, it, it, and it's weird, the dynamic of, like, I'm not trying to fuck you. So there is no, like, incentive other than like hey i like your company mm -hmm. the end no ulterior motive no like selfishness involved that's right just like hey man come bring some light into my life yeah ta-da the end you got to have it got yeah, to have it really and that's why man i've been down as a motherfucker yeah it's like I we haven't fucking even talked in weeks. I know. I I realized that too. Is that kind of bothered me? Of since we have the podcast, I end up like not talking to you because I want to save it. <laughs> right. Which exactly. I think is bullshit. I think we need to stop doing that. No, because I mean <laughs> we can still talk about it on the podcast after we've talked about it. You know yeah. I mean? Exactly. It's still very um, easy to bring back up. Yeah, fuck. I had some. I had a fucking thought and I lost it. It's about how beautiful I am, about how I'm the energy giver. And... Damn it, dude. It's gone. <laughs> That's all right, dude. You're saving it for the podcast. <laughs> what the fuck? It was such a good thing that I wanted to bring up. Let's see. About the podcast, about being friends, about saving stuff for the dude pot. i don't know my brain just said fuck you <laughs> involving friends and spouses yeah if i think of it i'll text you oh Ooh. gotcha there it is <laughs> gotcha way to not acknowledge the photo that i sent you you son of a bitch i acknowledged it when we talked yesterday or the day before. yeah yesterday you motherfucker well i don't remember i said how dare you assume that I would wear that hat? How dare you assume that I would ever be caught dead in something other than black? Yeah. Dude, that shit was so perfect. I saw him walking and then I was like, oh, I got to get a picture. And he like looked at me right as I busted out my phone. <laughs> and that's the picture you saw is that little fucker crying. <laughs> he just and, like... Uh, the look of defeat where it's like fuck dude yeah because he, he was walking at the speed of that child which is real slow and then he just stops <laughs> and just starts crying and that's when he looked up and uh yeah he was just like just total fucking weird weird looking dude and i was like this is a perfect doppelganger <laughs> it's it's creepy dude like, yeah it really is it i just hope that he doesn't look like me under the sunglasses but it's creepy dude yeah he actually was a little bit taller than you oh shit so, so he's strange. like even more skin and bones than i am that's why oh yeah oh yeah damn dude it's <laughs> Because, like, you zoom in closer on the face and it just gets more and more like me. And it's like, wait, I know. <laughs> what the fuck? 
Yeah, like I think honestly the picture that I got looks more like you than he did in real life. Okay. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, like, no, for sure. I don't know. There was some good shit going on that day where I got that picture of your doppelganger and then the video. There was just real magic. <laughs> Fucking weird, dude. That's it's spooky season, bro. Yeah. And the funny part is I didn't even want to be there. <laughs> And it ended up being super successful. I mean, the irony of like the two lazy fucks with a come and take it, like, oh, yeah, lawn chairs. Like, yeah, dude. Yeah, those, those people were great. Fucking relax, dude. They're on your fucking lawn chair. Yeah. Like, the story of the come and take it is a good story. It's right. a great story, but you don't need a political <laughs> statement on the back of fucking. So lawn chairs dude those people kept talking to the baton rouge people which you can see in that photo i think no you can't i was gonna say i wish you had taken a photo of pussy face yeah damn it i know maybe maybe i can find i took some videos so maybe i can find yeah i, I want to see <laughs> Still. The, the giant uh, in the middle of her face so anyways the come and take it people were talking to the baton rouge people and homies Grew, grew up in Southern California and moved to Texas, lives in Houston. Uh, I got all this information just from sitting there. <laughs> and of course. and uh, his son, who was in the middle, was wearing a, a Reagan Bush 84 shirt. All right, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but, I mean, it's ironically cool. You know what I mean? Like, but he's so goddamn young. Like, motherfucker, you were not alive. <laughs> yeah, of course not. <laughs> and then the guy next to him is just all Duck Dynasty camo. So you know? weird, dude. So, yeah. Yeah, it was just hilarious to to see them mingling. and What the fuck, dude? And, like, people are trying to look like they know what's going on in the race and and there, everybody's trying to look cool and shit. And I'm just sitting there, like hitting my weed pen. <laughs> people watching, <laughs> like, Fuck, dude. Just taking it in, man. Taking it all in. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, like being so far removed from a social setting where it's like, I forgot that people still like put on faces and like try to like look cool and yeah keep up appearances like that shit is so fucking foreign to me like, holy yeah. shit Could i think it's bad how exhausting that shit is i mean I, I don't yeah. think i think that you've got confirmation bias because you don't surround yourself by those type of people i yeah. think it's more alive than ever because like look at the people on youtube and instagram on tiktok where it's like They've removed themselves from the social settings, but they still have that, like, I need to look cool. I need to be funny. I need to be this or that in order yeah. to, like, appeal. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, I think it's, it's scary, but, like, man, when you're when you get past that, life is just so much easier and so much happier. Yeah, it's great. You're not beholden to other people's opinions of yourself. Like, me. Yeah. Like, I can like, control me. You should just be yourself. And the people that think you're cool, those are your people. And, like, respect that, mingle with them. But, like, don't try and fucking impress people that you shouldn't be impressing, you know? Right. And it's like, to a degree, you should be yourself. And to a degree, you shouldn't listen to what people have to say about you. Yeah. You know, but there yeah. are things that you shouldn't be yourself about. Like, if you're just a wild fucking pig, all right, you need to rein that in. And like, but you need to have like some sort of like self governance of like, the this is what i've established as bad behavior and this is what i want to stop and that's what friends are usually good about yeah yo you're getting fat as fuck or like yo you're way too horny or yo you're fucking like annoying then it's like all right those are good yeah or yo 
you're an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah. Like, how about you chill the fuck out a little? Yeah. You know, those are beneficial. But, but you know, you tell a fucking, like, a blonde-haired friend of ours to be himself, not going to get good results. Ever. True. Need to rein it in a little bit, my friend. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, take take credence in what your friends are saying about you that will be helpful. Yeah. You know? Well, blonde friend is hopefully making some strides. He's going to AA. Ooh, and, that's uh, very good. Yeah, I was like, fuck yeah, dude. And then he, uh, he's doing good at work and shit and just... To stay focused, and uh, he says he's done with strip clubs, but we'll see about that. Yeah, he needs to go to SA. What's or that? S SCA, sorry, Strip that Club Anonymous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd I, be good. Let's start it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, because I, I need to go to Hookers Anonymous, right. so it's like, hey, we all got our issues, man. Be like, hello, my name is King One, and I'm addicted to strippers. I'm addicted to <laughs> busted up pussy. <laughs> I'm addicted to pain. Every time I see a dollar, I think of strippers. I think of that, that <laughs> sweet, sweet, used up, drug riddled pussy. I just, I don't know what to do. Anytime I've got a I see. <laughs> Jeez. Well, I got yeah, to go. We always ended on a fun note. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, this is actually a really good one. So it is. It is. It's a long one. So have fun with the editing process. Thank you. And the Patreon is a ghost town. So we need to get a little more cognizant of like breaking it up if we're going to go for like two hours. Okay. But. Whatever, okay. dude. I, I like the uh, I like the movie trivia. I'm pretty good at that. I'll I'll come up with Star Wars trivia for you. Oh, sick. Yeah, dude. Yeah, whatever you feel like throwing at me, let's do it. Hell yeah, man. All right, yeah. enjoy your night, homie. All right, bro. Let me take care. Bye.